Welcome to the pre-recording of the second half of lecture five of computer algorithms scheduled for Friday, 21st June. At the end of the second week in an eight week summer course, so where the lectures take 100 minutes, I split them up in two lectures of up to 45 minutes with a break in between. Um, today, uh, the second half is largely independent from the first half, although it deals with ordering um, certain objects. Uh, we will order intervals. Um, and it will be our first introduction to greedy algorithms, where we want to optimize uh, something. Okay, what is the problem? Oops. So it went all the way to the uh, first slide. Uh, you see that we will actually consider two problems very much related. First, we deal with the interval scheduling problem. We design a greedy algorithm. And then we consider a modification of the interval scheduling problem. Okay, so let me navigate uh, very quickly to the um, problem. So here is the problem. Uh, we have one resource. So you could think of a computer uh, with one processor. So it's an idealized problem. We have some requests. Uh, for every request, we know the starting time and we know the ending time. Start and finish, S, F. And we have requests, N requests, numbered 1 to N. For every one of these requests, as the I runs from 1 to N, we have given the starting time and the finish time. Obviously, every request takes a non-zero time to finish. So the finish time is strictly larger than the start time. What we want to compute is a subset of those n intervals, of those n requests, uh, such that two things are satisfied. Uh, we have only one resource, so intervals that overlap in time cannot be scheduled both. And uh, we also want our resource to be occupied. Uh, we want to schedule as much, as many requests as possible. So that's actually uh, the goal to keep in mind. So when we think about greedy algorithms, we think about optimizing. We have a goal that we want to optimize and we want to do this step by step. Okay, uh, let's start designing an algorithm. First, um, we want to do as many as possible. So we should actually start as soon as possible. Um, so um, this also actually applies to uh, your own work scheduling. If you want to, if you have to do in your day uh, as many jobs as possible, you would start as soon as you can. So you select the request with the smallest starting time. Okay, so what happens if you run this on the following input? Uh, so it's drawn, uh, so the intervals are uh, drawn on the time axis. So uh, we have five requests. So one requests that spans the entire time axis and four shorter requests. Now the goal is to optimize as many, uh, is to schedule as many requests as possible. So if we start, uh, if we take the interval with the earliest starting time, you see that we will take the um, interval that finishes lasts, and that will prevent all other uh, requests from being satisfied. So in some sense, you will keep your resource indeed busy, 
and but you will finish only one request uh, and here if you see this also in the tasks that you have to do in one particular uh, particular uh, time frame all the requests are equally important um, so that's also one way you could see this in uh, the and you can kind of see that um, here if we would have picked uh, any of the other requests we would actually have been able to schedule four requests four out of five which is not bad okay the obvious rule doesn't work um, well um, why wouldn't we start with the shortest interval so we would uh, go through our intervals and kind of sort them on the length and uh, select them like this well here you see an input where we have three requests the shortest request overlaps with the two other requests so again if we would have this scheduling policy we would also not be optimal so we should have requested actually the other request Okay then, shorting, uh, starting with uh, the one that starts earliest, uh, picking the shortest one, in both cases, not good idea. So uh, this is one of those days where we have many ideas, but none of them actually really work. Let's look for another one. Uh, so we select uh, the request with the fewest conflicts. Okay, so then if you, so that's kind of a, not such a bad idea after all. Um, so if we, in the previous example, we would have selected the one with the previous uh, uh, conflict, well, we would have uh, been better off. Um, we would have scheduled this fine. It would also have worked for the first um, uh, example okay uh but just look at uh, this following input um we would actually then select uh, the interval here in the middle so that's obviously the interval that uh, leads to the fewest conflicts but uh, you see that uh, but then actually we cannot schedule uh, two of the intervals um, and that means that we can only schedule then at most three because the either we, 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 we can then schedule either the longer uh, interval here or each one of those three or also at the other side so it is symmetric so if we have the scheduling policy where we compute the number of conflicts and we would order the intervals on the ones on the conflicts that they have then even though that seems reasonable uh, we have inputs for which we it does not work okay we've tried three um, scheduling policies they all seemed to make sense start early uh use the shortest uh, job first uh, or minimize scheduling conflicts each of those three ideas we found an example where uh, that scheduling policy would not lead to an optimal solution well is there an optimal solution well actually there is um, so we will design now a greedy algorithm that works in an incremental fashion, but where we can demonstrate that that greedy algorithm will always come up with the um, best solution. Now, instead of looking at the starting times, look at the requests that actually finishes first. Why does that make sense? Well, we want to schedule as many requests as possible 
so instead of looking for the requests that start early, look for the requests that finish early. So pick the request that finishes first. So in that sense, our resource becomes free in the first possible, um, in, in the earliest possible time. And the nice thing is that it allows also for a recursive formulation. So what you do is you pick the requests that finishes first, you schedule it, and that means that you cannot schedule any of the conflicting intervals. So you remove all the intervals that actually overlap with the interval that uh, is scheduled first. And this means that you can continue then with the remaining set of intervals. So if you like recursive algorithms, recursion is extremely powerful. Well, this is a recursive um, algorithm. So here it is formulated as um, an iterative algorithm. R is the set of all requests. A is the set of accepted requests. As long as we still have requests, we will pick that request that has the smallest finish time. We will accept it and we will remove from R all the requests that overlap. So you can see that in every iteration of every time when the loop gets executed, the number of requests decreases. Um, so we are removing all the requests that overlap with that interval, and that's the interval i itself. So we, in every step, we remove at least one um, interval. And that is then the proof of the termination of the algorithm. So the algorithm stops because in every step in the while loop, every execution of the while loop decreases the number of requests. And the loop terminates when the um, set of requests finite the set of requests is actually empty so we started with a finite set and we remove from that finite set each time we run the loop so this is an algorithm that is unambiguous ordered set of finite sets finite steps so it terminates we still have to prove the correctness uh, so that's the uh, important job now do we actually have an optimal algorithm? Okay, but let us uh, run through an example. So we have here nine requests, so labeled one to nine, uh, labeled and also demonstrated in uh, geometric fashion. So if we had three resources, then we could uh, schedule them all. So if you want to loop forward to this pre-recording, you can do that. So that will be the second problem. But here we select one which finishes first and we remove uh, six and two. So six and two are obviously overlapping. So then the next, also what two is gone. So that would two would be the next one that overlaps. Um, the, the next one that finishes first. Um, so I should have pointed this out. The intervals are sorted according to the finish time. So the, 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 the numbers of intervals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you can see they are ordered along finish time. So the next uh, interval that we will pick is obviously three. Uh, if we select three, then we remove four. Then we go to five. If we select five, we remove seven. Seven, um, because it has a scheduling conflict, and then we can uh, finally, the last request is eight. So this is the solution to this problem. So the algorithm requires a short step, n log n, 
on the finish times but once we have sorted it's very straightforward to execute we run through the intervals one after the other so we touch every interval essentially once um, okay um, so we're going to prove the um, the optimality of this uh, greedy algorithm but actually what we uh, before we do the formal proof so there are three examples we had three ideas that did not work uh, see what this I what so and, and this is something proofs are often hard and uh, require a lot of discipline uh, running an algorithm especially if you have coded it up is very straightforward so here we have now uh, three other inputs so I demonstrated the algorithm on another input so the question is here run the algorithm on the three different ex examples that were used to uh, this regard to dismiss the previous three ideas for scheduling uh, if and you can already uh, see the I've said each time what the answer is it's clear how many jobs you can schedule how many requests you can schedule so each time you will see that uh, the algorithm should give you the optimal the largest number of requests okay uh, we are in this course not only designing algorithms so we have already done this uh, we also have to prove the correctness so that is the analysis um, so we have the set of accepted requests a then we have the optimal set so the fancy o um, it may be that that optimal set is not unique uh, so requesting so showing that the two sets are the same is actually not something that can be done uh, but what we want is that the cardinalities uh, so k is the cardinality of the set of accepted requests as computed by the algorithm and then there is also always for every input there is the optimal number m so m is unique even as the set of optimal requests is not unique so we will prove in the following lemma that the greedy algorithm stays ahead uh, which means that for every pair of indices we have that what is selected so we have the i's and the j's that the finishing time of the uh, of what the algorithm selects so the i'd uh, the l of the for any label uh, that actually able label l i of l finishes earlier or at the same time as the j which is in the optimal set The greedy algorithm stays ahead so we will prove this by induction so I indicated that a natural formulation of our algorithm would be recursive well uh, let's apply a recursion here as mathematicians uh, so recursion is very powerful when you write algorithms when you design algorithms it's also a very powerful proof technique okay um, the base case um, it has to be true for l equals one so because the algorithm actually selects the interval with the earliest finishing time so and that's straightforward we run over all the k's uh, all of the k numbers that are uh, larger in the optimal set and I must say that there might be some confusion now with the notation um, we uh, labeled the accepted jobs from I1 to IK uh, and then had J1 to JM uh, so the K here is just a free local variable in the lemma has nothing to do with the number of accepted jobs um, okay so in a proof by induction we state uh, that we're going to prove this on a parameter and a parameter here l uh, that's the base case 
Then we state the induction hypothesis. So the lemma is true for all L less than R minus 1, where R is larger than 1 because we have already done the base case. So we will prove this now going from R minus 1 to R. Okay, in the induction hypothesis, uh, we have already that uh, it's true for all intervals 1 up to r. We now consider the rt interval. So the optimal set consists of, op of all overlapping intervals. So what does that mean? That the starting time of the rt interval in the optimal set should actually not overlap with the um, finishing time of the previous. So what does that mean? That uh, for the greedy algorithm has to, has to select the art uh, interval. Well, we have that the art interval actually doesn't overlap. And since the greedy interval selects the interval that with the smallest finishing time, so it will be certainly, it could be that art interval in the optimal set, but it could be that there are many of those. So, but it should in any case be that the finishing time is less than the finishing time of the art interval in the optimal algorithm. And that proves the induction hypothesis. So we have not only for R minus one intervals that the property of the lemma holds, but we have it also for the R interval. So it works for all R intervals. All right, uh, now the main theorem about the optimality of the greedy algorithm. So the greedy algorithm returns an optimal set. So the number of requests that are accepted equals the number of requests in any optimal selection of the requests. Okay, um, in any case, what we have is that any set that is returned, so suppose that um, so we're going to work with contradiction. So we're going to say that the number of accepted requests as computed by our algorithm is not equal the optimal. So that means that we ended with k uh, intervals and the k plus one um, request in, the, in an optimal set could not be selected by the algorithm because it overlapped. But actually what we have uh, by the fact that the greedy algorithm stays ahead, we have that the finishing times of what the algorithm selected is less than the finishing time of the j k. So actually because of that algorithm, um, because of that property, that lemma, the JK um, request was available. But the greedy algorithm only stops when all requests, when there are all when all requests that are overlapping have been removed and the empty set was resolved. But the K plus one job could not the K plus one request could not be have been removed because it didn't overlap because of the lemma the greedy algorithm stays ahead. So therefore, the algorithm did not stop. Or another way of saying this, if the algorithm does not compute an optimal set, or an, then it must have stopped too early. And actually the algorithm uh, would then have not been executed correctly. Okay, so the greedy algorithm is an optimal algorithm. Um, and let's now uh, say, what is the running time? So uh, the running time is n log n, because we sort. 
So we sort just like we just like in the example, we label the intervals uh, according to their finishing time. Now for every uh, algorithm, for, for every request, we have to be able to select the starting time. So when we run through the ordered set of requests, we have the finishing time, but then we also have to uh, have sorted the array of the start time. So we also need to, uh, as we have sorted uh, the uh, algorithms, of, uh, the requests according to their finishing time, we also have a corresponding array that takes n steps to build. Either we build it afterwards or we build it um, as we sort. Okay, so now we have to show that as we go through the requests, we always select the request that finishes first. Then we find the first request that starts after the uh, finishing, after the first finishing job. And then also we look for uh, the older requests actually after that request that finishes first. So the point here is that we kind of sweep through all the requests and the amount of work per request is constant. So that is what it says for every interval we spend a constant amount of time. Okay, uh, problem solved. We have an efficient n log n algorithm that is optimal and correct. Uh, I should have said that trying all possible combinations was the brute force, and uh, that's of course not really good. That could be n factorial if you have to consider all possible orderings. So now we go to an extension of the problem called the interval partitioning. Uh, problem. It's also called the interval coloring uh, problem, or you could also say interval labeling um, problem. I started by saying that we have one resource. It's like saying we have one processor available, which is in this time of parallel computers, no longer a realistic assumption. Assume now that we have one thing, instead of one single resource, we have sufficiently many resources. Uh, you could see this problem as the scheduling of lectures. Um, so we have on campus finitely many classrooms, but we have many of them. And we want to schedule uh, lectures with given start and finish times. So this problem is being solved each and every semester um, in on our university. And uh, even people may complain that scheduling is a very, very complex problem, it is, uh, but we have shown that there is an N, we will show that there is an N log N algorithm for this. So it can be done just in sorting. Okay, how many resources do we need? Well, we define the depth of the set of intervals, which is uh, the maximum number of overlapping intervals. So you consider the time axis, you put all the intervals above the time axis, and then you um, count how many, at any given time, how many overlap. Okay, um, I, it's, so this is a property, so the, the, the book proves this. If you uh, want, if you doubt this property, um, look at the proof, but I think it's obvious that you need as many resources as the depth. Uh, so if you have somewhere important in time where you have three overlapping intervals, then it's obviously that you can't really uh, satisfy all these older requests with two resources. 
So that's essentially the one line proof of this property. Okay, uh, here is an example. Um, so you may assume that the depth of the set of the intervals is given on input. Uh, if not, uh, you can compute it. So exercise six is um, an exercise that asks for you to design an algorithm. Um, so, and you can perhaps start by solving this exercise by running the, um, by computing the depth. So, uh, you really have to write an algorithm here, and you also have to write a proof on the correctness and the termination. So, but you will already have partial credit if you can compute it for this example. And the answer is uh, three, it's as shown at the next slide. Uh, but I can give you an idea on how you will do this. You can sort uh, the intervals uh, according to their starting time. And you imagine a sweep. You have the horizontal uh, intervals, the horizontal timeline. Imagine a vertical sweep line. So the time is continuous, but if I kind of have it uh, indicated, uh, it was also useful when I made the drawing, that the algorithm should not a continuously sweeping line, but it moves from starting time to starting time. So it starts here with three, the three first intervals. So you can sort them. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So the algorithm, the, the intervals are actually sorted according to their starting time. So you move from starting time to starting time and you check the finishing time. So what you keep track of as your imaginary sweep line goes from left to right you keep track of the number of overlapping intervals. And you count each time. So you start essentially with one overlap, with, with one interval, interval A. Then you go to two. Uh, so they obviously overlap. You go to interval three. Now, then you go to the next interval D. Uh, you see that, uh, so your time goes... Uh, uh, your sweep line actually moves uh, to the start time of the fourth interval, and you see that the first two, the first and the third interval drop out. Um, so you end up with two intervals that overlap from three to two, then you go back to three when E is considered. So this is the running of the sweep line algorithm. Um, you have to show that you can in this way count the number of intervals. You keep track of the maximum. So at any time, you, you don't actually consider any times because the time interval is infinite. Uh, it's continuous. So you only need to consider the transition points. So in the correctness of this algorithm, there is an event that happens, and that is when you have a new interval that may start, a new request that begins. So these are the event points. Uh, you have as many event points uh, as the number of intervals. And it's only when you hit that new event that there is a change in the number of overlapping intervals. It can either go up or down, or it can say the same. So, But you will get the maximum. So that is the correctness. The running time of the algorithm, while the algorithm requires the sorting of the n intervals for the starting time. So it's an n log n algorithm. If you also add to it this, that you only do n steps and you only do a constant amount of steps uh, in each um, 
in each. Uh, so actually, the, the number of uh, steps that you have to do is actually bounded, bounded by the number of intervals. Because you will add and remove each interval only once in the set of uh, intervals that are overlapping. So this is a, a more elaborate exercise. Uh, so in the previous, in one of the previous homeworks, uh, there was also an exercise where you had to describe an algorithm. You had to uh, really describe it in sufficient detail that it can be executed. Uh, you have to show that it's actually an algorithm and especially the running time. So uh, illustrating your example, your algorithm on the example above is not sufficient. I mean, it's one of the things that you have to do and you could start with this, uh, especially since it's essentially solved here. Um, so you could see this as a sorting problem. Uh, we have already sorted here the intervals on uh, the starting time, but here you see that uh, three uh, resources suffice to schedule. So actually this picture uh, shows uh, the solution. So you have three layers of intervals, and if you have three resources, then the lowest, uh, the lowest um, intervals a e h they go to the first resource so they are assigned the label one uh, b f and i go to the second resource receive label two or if you like the color uh, your next color and then you have the third resource which will take care of the requests c d g and j Okay, so this uh, then also we 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 work we think with examples. Uh, we designed our first greedy algorithms with three kind of difficult examples, uh, which dismissed scheduling ideas. Um, okay, um, here um, we have an algorithm that assigns labels. Um, so we have pre-computed or we have given the depth of the set of intervals so d is a number of resources that we will have the intervals are now sorted by their start times um, so this is difficult different from the previous uh, algorithm sorting by start times was not something that we did there but here it is obvious if we sort by start time uh, then actually we know how to assign uh, labels Okay, so we, for every interval, uh, we want to assign a label to every interval. We have already all the labels. Um, so the fact that, uh, and we will prove this, um, so for every interval that starts earlier, um, you have to exclude this label that has been given to the earlier uh, because you don't want overlapping so you label you assign a label so you label uh, the eight label with some label that is not excluded okay so the formulation seems necessarily complex um, unnecessarily complex um, run the algorithm on the example but now actually run it by reading the sentences in this algorithm so you can run it uh, the way you understand the algorithm so but that's not the point of this exercise so the point of this exercise here is that you clearly indicate which step of the algorithm that you are uh, executing Okay, uh, labeling. So uh, we still have to prove optimality. Uh, well, optimality, we have to show that we can satisfy all requests. Um, the greedy algorithm will actually um, not give different labels to overlapping intervals. 
So here is uh, the proof. Uh, the proof of this lemma here is most likely necessary to understand why the algorithm works the way it does. So if we have two overlapping intervals, if the intervals do not overlap, then they can receive the same label. So that's something that we don't have to prove. So, But we have to prove that for two overlapping intervals, uh, we consider them i and j. So i is less than j. If the starting time would be the same, then actually i would be considered before uh, j. So when j is considered, so i has received the label, j is considered, then i is actually in the set of the labels excluded from consideration. So therefore j will not be assigned to the label. And therefore uh, we have that they receive uh, the different labels. So that is the clarification of why the algorithm worked, was formulated in the way it was formulated. Finally, uh, the main theorem. I'm more than 40 minutes in, so I'm starting to also a little bit run out of steam. Uh, the lemma is essential in proving uh, the correctness also of the algorithm, and also in some sense that the greedy algorithm, so by assigning labels according to start time, actually that this greedy algorithm will schedule every interval or every requests. Provided that we have sufficiently many resources, as many as the depth of the intervals. Okay, uh, we will show that every interval gets a label and uh, overlapping requests will not receive the same lemma by uh, the same label by the previous lemma. Okay, so we are running over the request. So we are at a jade interval and the jade interval overlaps with t intervals. Um, so if we consider the set of those t intervals that are overlapping, then we have a set of t plus 1 intervals if we add j to it. Now, this t plus 1 has to be less than or equal to the depth, because that's the definition of the depth. The depth is the upper bound, the maximum number of overlapping intervals. So therefore, d is uh, larger than or equal t plus 1. So the at the moment when we consider j, we have already t labels that have been assigned to overlapping intervals. So that t is less than d minus 1. So there is still at least one label, one free label that can be assigned to j. So there will always be a label. And by the lemma, the algorithm will do as it's supposed to be doing. So it will be correct. So every resource will be able to work with only one at any time and most one requests. So we have scheduled every interval uh, considering all values of j, 1 to n. So that means that our greedy algorithm is optimal. OK, I will end with uh, the list of exercises. We had seven exercises, so you don't, you're welcome to do all seven of them. But here are the five ones that will be collected in the week at the end of uh, the third week of classes.